Good morning again, everybody. Uh, I'm John Allen here with High Security, and uh, we might have a few more people coming, but they can join the program already in progress. We are going to talk this morning about connecting safety devices to High Security's Smart DC Control Board, and we're going to be doing a live demo. So this is a first for us to be doing a live demo. We're going to see how that works. Hopefully it goes really well. A few housekeeping things before we get started. Everybody is in listen-only mode, which means that you can't talk to me. I can't hear you. But you can still send me a message. Your, your computer has a chat window interface, and so you can send me messages and questions. And we will read through the questions at the end of the demonstration and, and take care of everything then. The other thing is that we are uh, taping this broadcast and we will put the recording of it up on our website in a little bit and so if you if you missed it or if you want to send somebody else to to see it and check it out uh, that will be available from our uh, installer portal on the website. So with that let's get going and um, what we're going to do today is uh, connect a photo eye. So, so this is the photo eye that we're going to be connecting. This is the EMX NIR5325 photo eye. And since August 1st, this has been shipping with every high security swing smart and slide smart operator. So this, this comes in the box with your gate operator. And we're going to show you how to hook it up. This is a, a reflective photo eye. It's got about 45 feet of range. It comes with this um, mounting bracket that is kind of a combination of mounting bracket and um, an environmental shield. And it comes with the reflector that also has the hood on it to keep uh, rain and, and stuff off of that. We're really happy with the performance of this device. I think you're going to really like it. And we're going to connect it up right now. So let's look at the wiring diagram first. And we'll just go through this from top to bottom. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to connect power. And we're going to do that the, to the 24 volt lug at the top of the board. And then we're going to connect the ground. And the ground is going to connect to common. but but the thing about the high security boards is that since we use normally closed monitoring for entrapment protection, uh, we have a special common for entrapment sensors that's switched. So the sensor common is only switched when the gate is running. All these, all these other commons up here at the top of the board are on all the time. The sensor common is down here at the bottom of the board and it's only switched when, when the um, it's only switched when the um, when the gate is running. So we're going to connect all of our sensors up to that one, and then we're going to connect the common of the relay output on the photo eye to that same wire. So those are going to be joined together, and then, like I said, we're normally closed monitoring. So we're going to take the the normally closed line of the output relay on the photo eye and connect that to our sensor input, sensor one. And that's what we're going to do right now. So let's, let's give it a shot. So I have my photo eye um, mounted already. And I've got the wires. And here's, here's, the, here's the wires that come with the photo eye. And what I've done is I've taken the power and I've crimped on this uh, spade terminal here. And um, that we're going to connect up here to the 24 volt DC. Like that. That's good. And then, like I said, we're going to connect the ground. And what I've done is I've taken uh, both the, the common output for the relay and the, the power ground and crimped them together into one lug. And this I'm going to connect to um, sensor common. So that's down here at the bottom of the board. 
and uh, I can tell you that that because the screw heads are higher than the surface of the board that it's really easy to get indexed off one on the labeling because you're looking down at the screw heads so the best thing to do is just to count up from the bottom so that you don't get don't land the wire off by one terminal so we're going to do this this is in emergency open 24 volts sensor common that's where we're going to land it right there it's nice and snug and then I have my normally closed output and that's going to go to sensor one it's the next one up from sensor common it goes right there and then the last wire is this gray wire which is a no connect so so I just went in and I, I clipped off the lead so that I don't have um, flying leads around you could cut this back if you wanted to <clears throat> so that's all wired up now what we need to do is to uh, configure the control board for uh, photo I input on sensor one so this is we're going to just follow the steps that we have here we're going to hit the menu key which starts the system scroll which I don't need to see right now so I'm going to hit menu key again to go past that now I'm in the user menu I need to be in the installer menu so I'm going to hold the outside two buttons to get me in the installer menu and now I'm going to just scroll through these I'm going to hit next until I see S1 S1 sensor one type currently it's set to not used so we want to set that to um, I close so I'm going to hit select so I can change it and hit next and I can scroll through the different settings here I'm going to set it to I close hit select and hit menu to exit so now I have the board is configured the I is up and running but I still need to align my photo eye so we have a process for that the problem is that in the idle state like this sensor common is is off there's no power to the photo eye so in order to align it I need to power it up we have a mode for that it's in the user menu so I'm going to hit menu and hit it again to go past the system scroll I'm in the user menu I'm going to hit next to scroll through the choices until I get to photo eye align there it is select to change that hit next to turn it on select and then menu to exit okay and now <coughs> what you see is we've got these LEDs on down here they weren't there before which tells you that we have power to the photo eye and and there's this additional functionality where the operator beeper will chirp to help you to align the photo eye because you're going to be away from it and you're going to be able to see what's going on so the way it works is if the photo beam is made it chirps and then if you break it it chirps again so if you if the if the eye is aligned it chirps twice and if you break the beam or it goes out of alignment it chirps once so it's aligned it's out of alignment so it's aligned so you can just move it back and forth in two axes do the horizontal axis first and then lock that down you want to position it about halfway between where it chirps once and it chirps twice so as you sweep through, as you sweep past the reflector, you'll see where it starts and where it stops. Position about midway in between and lock it down. Then do the same thing in the vertical axis and your photo eye is aligned. So my, my test rig here is a swing smart and I, it makes a convenient test rig for me because it's got the limits on it and I can actually operate the gate here. So we're gonna um, open the gate right now. And as it as it opens, 
the first time, it's going to exit the photo eye align mode. And you can see the sensors went off. And now that it's open, we're going to close it again. And if I break the beam on my photo eye, it stops. And then when the obstruction is passed, it, it resumes its operation. So that's it. That's how you that's how you install and align a photo eye. It's very, very simple and easy. Uh, but as long as we're here, and as long as, as uh, you've logged in, let's talk about what if you have a gate edge that you want to install also. So we're going to go ahead and install a, a wired gate edge. And to do that, we are going to use this um, module called the GEM 104. It's from Miller Edge. Um, the reason we use that is because gate edge detectors are a switch that is normally open. And we use normally closed monitoring. So they have the edges have a 10K resistor in it, but that's not the type of entrapment monitoring we use. So the GEM 104 converts a 10K resistive safety device to a normally closed safety device. So we are going to connect that up. And so I've got my little GEM 104 here. I don't know if you can see it in the picture. And I have it all, um, I have all the wires hooked up. It's got two green wires for power. I'm going to land one of them on, um, I'm sorry, the, the, the green ones are for the sensor input. The red ones are power. So I've got the one with the with this spade lug on it. I'm going to land that on a power terminal. Then I've I've crimped the common and the other power together so I can land that on sensor common. And then we're going to land the input on sensor two. So let's go ahead and do that. The other thing about this Gem 104 is the wires are kind of short. So um, and that might be a bit of an issue, but we'll, we'll make the best of it. You know what I'm going to do is, um, here's, a little t here's a little tip. Down here at the bottom of the board where it says radio options, there's a power lug that says plus 24 volts. And because my wire is kind of short on my Gem 104 and my power is way up here at the top, and sensor common is way down here at the bottom. I'm going to use this power tap, the plus 24 volt for radio options, because um, because it works just the same. It, in fact, they're all part of the same circuit electrically. So you know, there's a little hack for you. Inside tip. So I'm going to land that power on the plus 24 volt lug there. And now I'm going to land my common. I'm just going to gang it up with the other comments that are here already. These uh, little spade lugs make this a lot easier. I mean, you could do this with just flying leads if you wanted to, but it gets to be a lot of wires to manage, and the lugs make that really easy. Then the other green wire goes to sensor two. So. Now I gotta look straight on to make sure that this says sensor two here. Make sure that I'm landing it on the right lug. You could count up if you wanted. There's a diagram in the um, in the installation manual that has all of these numbered, so you could just count up to that. I'm sure that that's right. Okay, so my Gem 104 is connected. All you need to do is connect the edge to that, and uh, here's the leads for my for my um, edge sensor and I've crimped these little spade lugs on there and I've got the little spade connectors on my GEM 104. Polarity doesn't matter at all on this, it's just a switch and a resistor. So we'll just connect that together like that. And that is all connected and ready to go. 
Now we need to program the board to tell it that we just connected a sensor to sensor 2. So like before, we're going to go into the installer menu. So I'm going to hit menu to get the system scroll, menu again to get past the system scroll. We're in the user menu now. Get to the installer menu, we hit the outside two buttons. Then I'm going to get hit next until I see S2. That's SE2. It gets me every time. S1, S2. So this is the one I want to set. Since this is a wired edge, um, I'm going to assume that it's on a um, post and that we want to protect the gate in the open direction. So let's sit next, eye close, not that, edge close, eye open, edge open. So this is, gonna, this is going to protect the gate in the open direction. Hit select and menu to escape. And now, we're, uh, now we have our edge up and running. Now I can use that same trick with a photo eye line to bring power up to this thing. Let's just do that real quick. So I'm going to menu twice and then go to photo eye line. Oops, passed it. I'm going to hit backwards. It's off because it switches itself off after a full gate cycle. Hit select next to turn it on, select to save it, and menu. Okay, so now you can see we have the LED here next to sensor 2. It says that that is working, and we can actually test it. I'm going to hit the gate edge, and the light goes out. The light is on, the light is out, the light is on. So that is definitely working. So let's open the gate. And let's close the gate. Let's test the edge. That didn't work because I had the gate edge set to gate open. All right, take two. Let's do that again. Did I mention that this is live? Okay, here we go again. Open. Gate edge. And we're in safe mode. That's what was supposed to happen. So we're going to hit um, reset. And we're going to close the gate the rest of the way. Oh, we're closed. OK, so now we have a wired edge set up. But what if you wanted to set up a wireless edge? We have one more uh, sensor terminal, it's S3. So why don't we just go ahead and set up a wireless edge? So here's what we're going to do. Let's look at the wiring diagram. Oh, I skipped past that. There's the wiring diagram for the Gem 104. Uh, let's just dwell on this for a second. So if you want to see this closer, you can watch back the video. And then let's look at the wiring diagram for the um, wireless edge. Go back one, please. Um, so there are a number of new wireless edge transmitters and receivers on the market, and um, we've had a look at all of them. Uh, we think that most of these are going to be an effective solution. We've done a lot of testing with the EMX Well 200, and that's what we're going to install here today. So if you uh, go to the wiring diagram, next slide. Okay, so this, this is very much like um, what it took to connect the GEM 104. We're going to land the power on a power lug. We are going to um, tie the relay common and the power common together and land those on sensor common. And then we're going to land the relay output from the, from the receiver on um, sensor 3. So here's my here's my um, 
here's my receiver. And you can see that um, I've got these wires already pre-set up into the screw terminals here. And uh, this is ready to go. And here's the wires for it. So I have the power on the red one. Make that up here. I have the um, the commons here in this spade lug. So we're going to land those down here with the other commons. I wonder if they call it common because it's a connection that's common to everything you hook up. Everything goes to this screw terminal. I'm trying to just loosen that enough that I can land the lug without, without losing all the ones I already have attached. There we go. Tighten that down. Okay. And let's see. Here's my um, sensor input wire. We're going to go to sensor 3. That's the next one down from sensor 2. Now, if you're an electrician, don't laugh. I'm sure you can do a much better job of managing the wires than what I've done here. I am a um, mechanical engineer by training, uh, so my wiring jobs always end up looking like a spaghetti bowl. All right, let's give that a little tug, see if that's good. Okay, uh, that's landed. Let's power it up, and we'll do that again by using the photo align mode. So menu twice. I'm going to hit next till we get to photo eye align. There it is. Select. Switch it to on. Select. Menu to get back here. Let's watch the lights come on. All right. So I have, um, I have that done. I have a um, wireless edge. I have an edge connected to this um, wireless edge transmitter here. This is the, the transmitter. It's battery powered. I can take the cover off of it to show you what's inside. It's got a couple of lithium AA batteries inside. It's got a little antenna on there. Um, and the button here is to, um, to map this transmitter to channel one. So I went through and did that already. Got my photo I landed on these screw terminals here. And you can see when I close the gate edge, the light goes out. Uh, you know what I didn't do is I didn't set sensor 3 to an input um, device. I didn't assign that. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. So I'm going to hit uh, menu twice. Outside 2 to go to installer menu. And we're going to go to S3. S1, S2, S3. Not used. That's not going to help very much. So let's set that for... Um, so this edge is going to go on the leading edge of your slide gate. And I know this is a swing gate operator, but we're, we're for the purposes of this demo, let's say it's a slide gate. And it's on the leading edge, so we want this edge to protect it in a closed direction. So let's go next, I close, edge close, that's what we want. Select, and menu to exit. All right, let's, uh, let's cycle the gate one last time. Open it. Photo light does nothing. And we're going to try to test our edge as it's closing. So we'll hit close.
And that worked just fine, even though I knocked my edge off the table and everything fell apart. Everything's working as it should. So we have set up now a photo eye and two edges, and we have just finished installing a very safe gate. Um, you know, that was pretty easy. That is the demonstration for today. And uh, I think we're ready to, to take some questions. So let's have a look and see uh, what the questions are coming in. First question says, uh, can I connect to the 24 volt screw terminal next to the sensor common? Uh, OK, that's a great question. So if you look at the board, we have, um, we have sensor common right here. The, terminal right below it is plus 24 volts. So you can actually see this on the wiring diagram. If you, It's the second one up. It says plus 24 volts. Um, that is functionally equivalent to these 24 volt taps up here and this 24 volt tap down here. They're all part of the same circuit. And um, you can connect to any one of those four places to power a safety sensor. And it's the common that switched. So, you know, that's what counts in terms of the normally closed entrapment monitoring. Okay, what's the next question? Do I really need to connect all of these devices? And edges. Uh, no, actually, you need one device. You need one safety device, entrapment protection device that's monitored in order to make the gate functional. Um, now, that's what you need to make the gate operator functional. It may or may not be what you need to make the gate itself safe. So there's lots of other things that you can install and install what you need to make the gate safe and to protect it from entrapment, but in order to make it operational, um, one sensor is all you need. Next question, do you, do you need, you need to manually change or modify the settings on sensor two or three, or can that be left in their default, default position? You need, you need to um, set them manually. Uh, as we demonstrated, the, def the default, when you first power up a device, the default is um, not set. And uh, nothing is going to work when the sensor inputs are set to um, zero is, is the default number. It's not set. So, so if nothing else, you have to go through at the first power up and set them all to not used. And then if you're going to use them, you need to change them to something else. So the defaults are not going to work. Are the operators coming with a GEM 104 anymore? Yes, we are still shipping the GEM 104 with uh, every um, slide gate operator. We don't ship it with swing gate operators, but we do ship it with slide gate operators. Um, I know this because uh, yesterday I needed a GEM 104 for this demonstration and I went out to the production line and I stole one from their bin where they were putting them in every unit. Don't tell anyone. Next question. If using just one monitored safety device, let's say a photo eye on sensor one, does anything have to be done or changed on sensor two or three to allow proper operation of the gate operator? Uh, well, that's a good question. Um, as I mentioned, when you when you power it up for the first time, you have to choose a setting for all the sensor inputs. And our recommendation is that you set them to not used until you actually do use them for something. And uh, if they're set for not used, then it's not going to interfere with the operation of the gate.
Next question. The EMX Well 200 is not on the current UL325 approved devices list. Will this be added? Yes, we are um, adding it to the approved list. And uh, we should have a, that list changes frequently. Uh, we are always looking at and um, and evaluating new devices as they come out. And all three of the receivers that I mentioned are going to be added to our approved device list. Any other questions out there? That's the last one on my list. Okay, well, thank you everybody. I appreciate your uh, time and tuning in and uh, we'll see you next time.